Eva was a six-year-old girl who was struggling in school. She was a quiet child and didn't make friends easily. Her classmates would often play together during recess, but Eva would sit alone playing with her dolls. One day, Eva's teacher, Mrs. Johnson, noticed that Eva was always alone during recess. Mrs. Johnson decided to speak with Eva and find out how she was feeling. Hi, Eva, Mrs. Johnson said, sitting down next to her. How are you doing today? I'm okay, replied Eva, looking down at her feet. I've noticed that you don't play with the other kids during recess, said Mrs. Johnson. Is everything okay? Eva hesitated for a moment before answering. I don't have any friends, she said softly. Mrs. Johnson's heart broke for Eva. She knew how important it was for children to have friends and socialize with their peers. I see, she said. Well, I'm here to help. Let's talk about why you think you don't have any friends. Eva shrugged her shoulders. I don't know. They don't like me, I guess. Mrs. Johnson knew that Eva was a kind and caring child, but she needed to help her build her confidence. I think you're a wonderful person, Eva, said Mrs. Johnson. You just need to believe it yourself. You have to be confident in who you are. Eva nodded, still unsure of herself. But how do I make friends? Well, why don't we start by trying to talk to someone in your class, suggested Mrs. Johnson. After Mrs. Johnson's talk with Eva, she felt inspired to try and make friends in her class. However, it seemed that no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't seem to fit in. Eva's family moved frequently due to her father's work, so she had to start over and make new friends each time. It was hard for Eva to keep up with the social dynamics of each new school. Eva would approach the other children and try to start conversations, but they would often turn away from her or simply ignore her. She tried joining in on games during recess, but the other children would exclude her or tease her for not knowing how to play. Eva felt alone and lost, and she missed her old friends from her previous schools. One day, Eva's parents noticed that she was coming home from school looking sad and dejected. They asked her if everything was okay, and Eva opened up to them about her struggles. I can't seem to make any friends, Mom and Dad, she said, tears streaming down her face. I try to talk to the other kids, but they don't like me. Eva's parents listened to her and tried to offer words of encouragement. We know it's hard for you, sweetie, said her mother, but you're a wonderful person, and you just have to find the right friends who will appreciate you for who you are. Eva nodded, but she didn't feel any better. She wished she could go back to her old school and be with her old friends again. The next day, Eva's parents decided to speak with her teacher, Mrs. Thompson. They explained Eva's situation and asked if there was anything she could do to help her. Mrs. Johnson was understanding and empathetic. I've noticed that Eva has been struggling to make friends, she said. I've been keeping an eye on her and trying to encourage the other children to be more inclusive, but it's a slow process. Eva's parents were grateful for Mrs. Johnson's help, but they knew they had to do something more to support Eva. They decided to enroll her in an after-school program where she could meet other children who shared her interests. Carl, Eva's father, was a hard-working man who had a successful career that required him to move frequently. He was proud of his job, but he also felt guilty about the impact it had on his family, especially Eva. As he watched Eva struggle to make friends and adjust to each new school, Carl couldn't help but feel responsible for her struggles. He knew that his job was the reason they moved so much, and he worried that it was causing Eva to miss out on important social connections. Carl often worked long hours, but he made sure to spend quality time with Eva whenever he could. He would take her out for ice cream or the park, trying to make up for the time they lost during the moves. But no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't shake the feeling of guilt that weighed on him. When Eva's parents decided to enroll her in an after-school program, Carl felt hopeful that it would help her make friends and feel more settled. He made sure to attend the program's events and show his support for Eva. However, he still felt a sense of regret that his job had caused so much upheaval in their lives. Carl knew that he couldn't change the fact that his job required them to move frequently, but he vowed to do everything in his power to make the transitions easier for Eva. He would listen to her concerns and try to be there for her as much as he could. After several weeks of Eva attending the after-school program, Carl began to notice a change in her demeanor. She was coming home from school with a smile on her face and seemed to have more energy and enthusiasm. Carl was thrilled to see his daughter so happy, but he couldn't help but wonder what had caused the sudden shift in her mood. One day, while they were having dinner together, 
Carl asked Eva how school was going. It's going great, Dad, she exclaimed. I made a new friend in school. Her name is Mia, and she's like a twin for me. We love the same things, and we have so much fun together. Carl was delighted to hear that Eva had made a new friend. That's wonderful, sweetie, he said. Tell me more about Mia. What do you two like to do together? Eva's face lit up as she started to describe her new friend. Mia loves to draw and paint just like me, she said. We spend hours working on our art projects together, and she's really good at it. We also like to play dress up and pretend we're princesses or superheroes. It's so much fun. Carl smiled as he listened to Eva's stories. He was relieved to hear that she had found someone to connect with and share her interests. I'm so happy for you, Eva, he said. Having a good friend can make all the difference in the world. Eva nodded, her eyes shining with excitement. I know, Dad. I feel like I have a real friend now, someone who likes me for who I am. Carl leaned in and gave Eva a hug. I'm proud of you, sweetie, he said. You're such a brave and kind girl. I know it can be hard to make friends when you're always moving, but you did it, and I'm so glad that you did. Over the next few weeks, Carl noticed that Eva and Mia were becoming even closer. They started to have play dates outside of school and would often call each other on the phone to talk about their day. Carl was thrilled to see Eva so happy and fulfilled. One day, Mia's mother called Carl to thank him for encouraging the girl's friendship. Eva has been such a wonderful friend to Mia, she said. They're like two peas in a pod. We're so grateful that they found each other. Carl was touched by the kind words and thanked Mia's mother for calling. As he hung up the phone, he felt a sense of pride and happiness. He knew that he couldn't control everything in his daughter's life, but he was grateful that he could play a role in helping her find happiness and friendship. Eva's parents, Carl and Lisa, were thrilled to see their daughter so happy and fulfilled. They had always known that it was tough for Eva to make friends since they had to move so often due to Carl's work. But now, with Mia in her life, everything seemed to be falling into place. One day, Eva came home from school with an invitation to a party. The school was hosting a carnival-themed party, and all the children were encouraged to dress up and bring their families. Eva was so excited to attend the party with Mia, and they decided to wear matching costumes to look like twins. Carl and Lisa were also looking forward to the party. They wanted to meet Mia and get to know her family. They had heard so much about her from Eva and were eager to finally put a face to the name. On the day of the party, Carl and Lisa arrived early to help set up. They were greeted by the sight of children running around in costumes, playing games, and eating cotton candy. Carl felt a sense of joy seeing his daughter so happy and carefree. Eva and Mia arrived soon after, wearing matching clown costumes complete with oversized shoes and red noses. They ran over to Carl and Lisa, their faces beaming with excitement. As Carl and Lisa stood there, they finally saw Mia for the first time. They were taken aback as they had expected someone who looked more like Eva. Mia was a beautiful black girl with curly hair and big brown eyes. But despite their initial surprise, they were thrilled that their daughter had found a friend who made her so happy. Eva ran over to them, holding hands with Mia, and introduced her to her parents. Mom, Dad, this is Mia, my best friend, she exclaimed, beaming with pride. Carl and Lisa smiled at Mia and welcomed her with open arms. They were impressed with how confident and self-assured she seemed, despite being in a new environment. They could see that Mia and Eva had a genuine connection, and that was all that mattered. As they watched the two girls playing together, Carl and Lisa felt a sense of pride and admiration for their daughter. They were amazed that at such a young age, Eva had the ability to see past the color of someone's skin and simply see them as a friend. Carl felt a twinge of guilt for his own initial surprise at Mia's appearance. He knew that he had always tried to teach Eva to be accepting of others, regardless of their race or ethnicity. But seeing Mia in person had made him realize that he still had some unconscious biases that needed to be addressed. Lisa, on the other hand, felt proud of her daughter for being so open-minded and accepting of others. She felt grateful that Eva had found a friend who brought her so much joy and happiness. As the party went on, Carl and Lisa had the chance to talk to Mia's parents. They were a warm and welcoming couple who were thrilled to meet Eva's family. Carl and Lisa found that they had a lot in common and enjoyed chatting with them. Over time, Carl and Lisa became good friends with Mia's parents and their families started spending more time together. They would often have play dates or go on outings together and Eva and Mia's friendship continued to blossom. 
Carl and Lisa realized that their daughter's friendship with Mia had taught them a valuable lesson about acceptance and open-mindedness. They'd come to see that race should never be a barrier to friendship and that all children should be encouraged to see beyond skin color and embrace others for who they are. In the end, Carl and Lisa felt grateful for the opportunity to learn from their daughter's friendship with Mia. They knew that Eva had a bright future ahead of her, full of love, compassion, and acceptance, and they were proud to be her parents. Proud to be her parents.